Hey guys, long time no see. It's been a minute. It's just been a long time. It's been a long, long time. I've been in Korea now for seven months. It was seven months on the 10th. Time flies. And I thought, you know what, I need to make a video. Y'all have been saying, Iman, where are you? <sighs> where have I been? Just working. If you follow me on Instagram, you know what I've been up to. I eat a lot. I've gained a lot of weight. Can you tell? Can you tell? Because, girl, you've been eating. Whew. So I need to stop. I've gained so much weight since returning to Korea. It's just so much good food. I need to exercise. You'd think, like with all the stairs we have and the subway stations and walking around and this humidity, this heat that we've been having, you'd think I'd be losing weight after Ramadan, even during Ramadan. The weight that I lost during Ramadan gained that ish right back. So yeah. Anyways, long time no see. How you been? I've been good, busy, working. Um, I've been getting a lot of messages from you guys, like direct messages and emails and comments, everything. People are asking, I want to come to Korea, how do I do it, I'm hijabi. I just want to put it out there like a disclaimer. I, like before coming to Korea, there was no hijabi on YouTube that was in Korea. So the process is the same for anyone who wants to come to Korea, like the information's all out there. You just gotta do it. You might not have an easier time like other people, but if you watch the video that I made with Charlie Cheer on her channel, I will link it down below, being Muslim in Korea, you are gonna face some form of discrimination when applying for jobs. Why? Because you put your picture on the application, they see the hijab, and it's downhill from there. Some places, not everywhere. I have friends that are working here that wear hijab, that are Muslim, that are teaching. If you are Muslim but you don't wear the hijab, you probably won't have a hard time finding a job. So yeah, but just speaking from the perspective of a hijabi, and being black, you're gonna have a hard time finding a job. So I was just like any one of you. I did my research, I watched YouTube videos. Just do that. Watch YouTube videos, do your research, and inshallah, you'll find something, okay? So I hope that helps because I tend to get people who are like, I need to talk to you. I have to ask you so many questions. And it's like, if I actually sit down and answer everyone's questions, I ain't gonna have a life. I'll just be on my email, on my Instagram, on my YouTube, just replying, and usually it's the same questions over and over again with a few minor, you know, differences. So, my only advice is do your research because regardless of being Muslim, the information, the process is exactly the same. So it's not any different. Your experience just might be a little different. We're in summer camp right now at my um, academy, so it's nicer because I get done earlier, but I only have one more week of that, and then kids go back to school on the 24th, and then it's back to my evening schedule. I get frequently asked questions like, where are you from? How old are you? How long have you been in Korea? Why do you know Korean? I'm Somali American. I'm 26. And how long have I known Korean? I studied Korean in university. It was offered at my university in Minnesota. What? What? So that's where I took it. I did two years of Japanese as well, but my Japanese has gone down the drain. <laughs> Let's not talk about that. But yeah, so that's why I knew, I knew Korean before coming. Um, has it improved since I've been here? To an extent, not really, because I don't get to practice because I work so much. So I do take classes uh, once a week, Korean classes. That's been helping, but again, I need more practice, like conversing. So, you know. And I've been to these like language cast things and, you know, these get togethers for foreigners with Koreans. And to be honest with y'all, especially as a hijabi, like, and my friends have noticed this too. It's mostly like foreign girls who are interested in Korean guys or Korean guys interested in foreign girls. And as a hijabi, no one's going to approach you like that. I ain't looking for that, first of all. But it's just like people are there for maybe different reasons than you. And I've noticed for the most part, people don't actually practice their skills, like speaking skills. You mostly just like revert to English. And yeah, and I've gotten like weird weird partners so I'm just not about that scene at all and I want to address something I get a lot of girls who are like oh my god Korea I'm waiting for you or like 
please wait for me and I'm coming so I just want to like tell you girls out there like a little reality check Korea is not what you see in the dramas it's not this like fantasy of like when I go there I'm gonna see so and so I'm gonna convert whatever celebrity I'm into he's gonna become Muslim we're gonna have a happy hella lifestyle no it's not gonna happen most of the times like young Korean guys don't even like look at hijabis you don't get hit on you just get weird ajashis weird harabujis trying to be like where are you from? And that's creepy. If you see any ajashi approach you, ask you questions, just get away. Just get away. So yeah. Just, yeah. I mean, I don't know how to explain it. I just get girls who are really, really desperate and are in this bubble. And I'm not saying it's all of y'all. I'm just saying some of y'all are going to get a rude awakening when you come here and it's not what you expected it to be. Culturally and as a tourist, there's so much to see, so much to do. As you see on my Instagram, I have videos of like things that I go to and b-boys and you know performances. Those kind of things are a lot of fun. But when it comes to like living here, it's not what you think it's going to be. A lot of the times people just look at you and then they don't give a crap. Like, they don't. Unless someone has studied abroad or they, they've been around Muslims, then they're going to be like, oh, that's a hijab, and they'll try to talk to you. But um, other than that, I just want to tell you guys, don't get your hopes up. Don't get your hopes up. Culturally and like as a tourist, you're going to love it. But like as someone who wants to move here and you think like the stars are going to align and it's going to be like a mini drama or you're going to meet your, you know, Lee Ho or whoever you're into, preferably Kim Ubin, but ain't going to happen. Okay. Yeah. So I think I went on a rant there, but it's just guys, guys. So yeah. Korea is just like any other country. It has its problems. You're going to see things that you can't change. You're going to see things you don't like. And this is like what I say. Whenever I see something that I disagree with, or I'm just like, what the hell? I'm just like, oh, Korea. Just add it to that list. Just add it to that list. I gained so much weight. Look at that, look at that pimple. People are like, Iman, you have such great skin. Do you see that? This is recovering. This Before this was like an island. It was like a volcano about to explode. And something over here. And like ish over there. Korea has these things. Hold up one second. I don't know about y'all, but I am pro- I have acne prone skin. And yeah, they is just not good. So when you guys see my pictures and you say, Oh, Iman, you have mashallah, you have nice skin. I mean, thank you, thank you. But those are all my good days. When I have pimples, they're so bad. Even I have like something brewing on my chin right now. But um, there are these guys, 3M Next Care. 3M is based in Minnesota, like where it's headquartered in Minnesota. Here is how it looks like in the actual like thingy. And those pink, um, what do you call it? They're just like a, basically like a peel off so it stays sanitary and then you stick it on your face. So. It's amazing and then it comes with these like huge ones right there that's if you've got like a monster on your face but the little ones come in handy so yes you can't see them that well but girl these are good and yeah I think that's about it I just wanted to come on here and apologize for disappearing I have a lot of footage from the Halal um, Korea Expo that I went to um, it was basically organized by Korean Muslims and there were like the national foods, not national, oh my god, can't speak English. The natural food expo, foods expo was going on, like they simultaneously had that with the Halal Korea Expo together. So it was organized by Korean Muslims, this was in its first year and they basically invited all these companies that are natural or certified halal there were also like companies that are maybe producing products that they'd like to um what do you call it promote and get you know muslim people to buy or buyers to buy their product and sell it so yeah a lot of them had their certification out there was like prosciutto and salami being sold like halal salami certified from australia oh yeah oh yeah so yeah, it was really, really nice, so I will kind of put a, blo a vlog together of those, 
And yeah, if you guys just want me to like put a vlog together of all the things I've done that I've not done, made a video for yet, I will do that. And if you have any video ideas, go ahead and leave it down below. If it's something I've already done, like can hijabis teach in Korea, how do my parents react when I moved to Korea or when I wanted to move to Korea, I've already made those videos. And um, if you've asked a question, I've probably answered it already in a video. So I'm really lazy and I cannot reply to people who ask me the same thing as the email before or the message before. A lot of the questions you're asking are online. Um, yeah, so that's why I just, I don't have time with the schedule that I have right now and my weekends are my only free, the only free time I have, I really can't reply to everyone's emails and messages. It's just a lot of work. I need to like hire someone to manage my stuff because girl. Okay, I need to go now and I will see you guys later. And yeah, if you have any video requests, put it down below. Thank you for all the new subscribers that I have gotten. Wow. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Hamdi Talk, or Hamdi, she um, posted a blog post and on her Instagram and on her blog about the top 10 Somali YouTubers. And I was featured on there. What? Alhamdulillah. Thank you, Hamdi. And I think a lot of you have also subscribed to me as a result of that. So thank you. I hope I didn't talk you guys to death, but, um, yeah, I'm gonna, you know, wrap this up again, and I'll see you guys later. Bye, assalamu alaikum, annyeong.